hi everyone and welcome back now we are going to work on the events part let's say the order because uh, once we get the order status order payment processed what will happen after that so in the last video we have already seen uh, how we are making the payment and how we are updating the the status of order and payment accordingly now what will happen once you confirm the order by making the successful payment we need to there is another service event listener service either you can design this service in the simple express app where you are where you are listening for the incoming events from particular every time queues or you can take the advantage of uh, something pre-built utilities which is provided by the nest.js microservices so in the nest.js microservices what happens is you create a client proxy which is going to send an event and then there is a server which is going to listen to the events coming from the rabbitm queue kafka redis or different different mode of transports which supports mqtt protocol tcp and all so this is the order processed payment maybe there is an order service we where you are actually confirming the payment after the stripe getting success there you have a client registered and that client is going to send a message send an event of saying that order is successfully done now start the delivery of this uh, order or the the put menu which is selected so we can use a rabbit mq as a transport mode asynchronously because nest.js microservices supports tcp and uh, mqtt tcp means when you are requesting for something from another service and uh, considering that as a request and reply you need the response right away but sometimes in the event driven system you are sending an event that order pop payment processed now take action on to that uh, and create a assign a delivery partner so here we created a client proxy we'll send an event to the rabbit mq here we are using rmq protocol mqtt which is going to send an event and then there is a listener service to the same queue of rabbit mq which will get the message as an event message it's like a fire and forget right if you look into this these, these are the nest.js microservices supported here you create a client and then there is a server this is how you you will register a client and you will send an event so there are two different uh, ways of sending that data either you can send a message or send an event when you are sending a message that means it's a synchronous when you are sending an event that means it's asynchronous which is being done so here you can see we are working on the order service so here we need to add required module like amqp lib amqp connection manager nest js microservices these are the three different modules we need amqp lib uh, and amqp connection manager for the rabbit mq and we also need a docker container for it so important thing for this video is you need three things uh rabbit mq container you need to know okay where the rabbit mq is running the host port and all you need a client rabbit mq client who is going to send an event server who is going to listen to these all kind of events and all these are going to happen with the nest.js microservice so we are going to use this nest.js microservice with the order service and there is another service a delivery service so this module will be uh, used there here we are confirming the order right and so we know where to from where to send an event so we need to register a client on the order service and how we do it is we can go to the domain module and here we'll start getting the client proxy dot register client module dot register and this is where you are creating the client who is going to send an event to the rabbit mq and then there is another nest js microservice which is acting as a listener so here you will pass some of the argument like payment process, transport. Uh, so here there are different mode of transports. First of all, it's not only you can just use RabbitMQ, you can use Kafka, Redis, uh, gRPC, TCP. gRPC, TCP is mainly used for request and reply. But RabbitMQ, Kafka and Redis are mostly asynchronous. Let's say you just send an event and maybe the target service will trigger some action or take an action on the event which has happened in the past so here this is assigned delivery partner to the process daughter this is what going to happen so we have a one is a sender and one is a listener right so we have a client proxy and the transport mode can be a tcp grpc uh, it can be redis so tcp requests are synchronous request send and reply request and reply i'm asking you some data you reply me back with the data rmq transport and mkdt it's a fire and forget 
I send the event and I really have no track of the event because this is totally decoupled services, decoupled microservice. Order service and delivery service are totally decoupled microservices. Here I'm sending an event and then there is a target service will listen to that event. You can have some kind of a mechanism where you can track the if there is any triggering action has happened on that or not. Like before sending the event, you record that event and then you can the, the target service can acknowledge asynchronously over the time that action has been happened on that. So there are the message pattern and event pattern. Message is in the context of you are sending a message. Event pattern is when you are actually sending an event to the target service. So here these are the different uh, mode of microservices, RabbitMQ, Nets, MQTT and all. Here we created a TCP based microservice which is a request and response based and here you are just going to send so here from the client you will send the data and this is a receiver side message pattern if the message pattern is kind of this coming from the client okay return this kind of data and they can return observable stream promises and all okay so this is how we register the client and inject the client proxy in the server so there are two important things there is a client proxy and then there is a server client proxy you just inject the client and create the client and this dot client dot connect and then this dot client dot emit this dot client dot send there are two things emit means you are sending an event which is asynchronous this dot client dot send that is synchronous okay that's important how we are doing communication between the client proxy and the server so mm -hmm. so here we are going to send or emit the event to the target uh, service so here you can see order process this is like another service i have which is a delivery service that is going to have a connection with the RabbitMQ, same as the client proxy so here we are going to have a i will delete everything because i'm not going to have a row controller this is going to have a listener service and here we are going to use this uh, nestjs microservices so this is a delivery service we have and then there is the order service order service is going to send an event delivery service is going to track that event so here we will do create microservice and inside a create microservice we will provide all the options i think we need to add a nest which is microservice why oh, it's not uh, allowing you so this is the create microservice pass the app module and pass all the different options await app dot listen but this service is not acting as a HTTP service which is listening to the, the routes and all. No. We are creating a simply a service which can support the different transport. So here it is a create microservice app module. The transport option is uh, here RMQ and here microservice option. That's why it's not showing. microservice options okay this should be coming from microservice options from the nestjs yes, microservice and these are the options we will pass because this is a listener connecting to this rabbitmq url which we have here and this is the queue name on which you will be listening to the messages so there is a rabbitmq it can contain a multiple queues we are target we need to create uh, a particular queue once we log into the RabbitMQ console because we are going to bootstrap the RabbitMQ using Docker. So this is the order messages. Okay. So this is how you will create a server. And this is the listener side because this is listening to the events which are coming from the client, client proxy. So we need to just, first of all, we need to have our RabbitMQ up and right. So that's, uh, it is using username guest and password guest. Here I can create a delivery entity. So obviously we need to persist some data. Once the event is coming, we need to create a record. Okay, there is a delivery coming coming in for this order, for this order ID, and this is the order payload. And the, now we will start looking for the, the partner to be assigned for this order delivery. So we, we have the same set of uh, dependencies and all those things for this. And here, inside this so this is the card service we will just copy the same stuff app module db module and all because you can still use the db module from the database and db module dot uh, for root you can pass all the entities this db module we are using in every service 
and what that is doing is it is registering the entities you have so that on the initialization of application you can have the table created okay so i have a delivery entity db module dot for root and this is a simple delivery entity which contains the order id order payload mm -hmm. and order and uh, assignment status if the delivery partner has been assigned delivery partner id delivery partner all these entities i'm going to all these attributes this delivery table is going to have so we will import this thing and then we are going to see what all modules we need here here i will create a simple class and try to bootstrap the application this is a simple delivery service delivery entity this is a simple controller which is not being used anywhere currently we are getting this uh, unable to try to connect to this transport okay so for that we need to have RevitMQ up and running so we'll create a delivery controller delivery controller is not a nest js api route controller this is like another set of controller which is going to listen to the incoming events from the uh, client proxy like delivery controller it will just look for this particular event pattern so there is an event pattern and uh, we are looking for this order messages order processed these kind of uh, events and uh, you can get once this you, you start getting the event you can do just a console.log what the event payload you are getting here so this should be async handle handle event for order right because the order has been placed and you need to play with that we can just try to get what the data it is giving us so it can be just of type record string of string a string of unknown the keys will be string we have value we don't know so we just try to put console.log data and so this is a delivery controller we will just register that in the app module controller okay and now we can go to the next step and try to see this RabbitMQ. So this is our Docker Compose. I'm just using this base image. Uh, do we have it already? I think we don't have. So I need to add this RabbitMQ. I already have it somewhere. RMQ listener, RabbitMQ management 3 Alpine. And in the Docker Compose, dot override myml, I will just put the definition where I can provide a volume mapping and the port mapping. You can get this reference from my docker compose file it's the same view just define the port mapping volume mapping and there are two ports one is for the rabbit mq and another is for rabbit mq admin management add it docker compose up it will just try to pull the rabbit mq image and it will spin up the, the container for me that you can log in so we can log in with the five one five six seven two let's see what we get Okay, we just enter admin admin or we can just enter guest guest. I'm not sure about the initial credential. I think this is a guest guest. Or I will try to log in with the 5672. Okay, I need to check what is the username and credentials for this. So I think it's admin guest or admin. Okay, it's a guest and admin. The username password is guest and admin or guest guest just try uh, because initially it was not working then I reload the page and it starts working either it is a guest guest or admin admin one password should work if you check the connection URL also there also we are passing guest guest so it should work here we need to create this order queue so go to the queue and management and create order queue add queue okay this is the one thing you will do and then you will also create the virtual host that is the thing because if you don't create and you need to give the permissions so here i had a virtual host i will just call this as a guest or admin i'm creating admin as a virtual host and i think i need to give a permissions also add user admin admin so this is the admin with all the permissions i think i need to provide the the permissions also Yeah, this is administrator permissions I have given to the admin role. So admin, admin and I will select administrator. So I think yeah, this administrator now have access to the both the virtual host. 
so this is important now so what uh, configurations i have is i have uh, two names admin and guest i just created them random and if you look into the virtual host what all virtual host we already have so if you look into the the users there is admin and guest and these are the virtual host which we have configured so i will try to just show you that particular part because that is important so here these are the access can access the virtual host so there are two virtual hosts we have created admin and admin so guest user can also access that virtual host you can see guest user can access virtual host forward slash and admin both and we are using guest user we are using guest user for accessing the rabbit mq and it has access to the admin virtual host that is what we need so now if you log into the guest guest and admin connections you should be able to connect now the nestcs microservice successfully started we are connected to that we can start that again also this is the order service and once you are sending the order we can we should start sending this event so this is the delivery service which is doing nothing but it is looking for these events and try to just print the message okay what the event we are getting from the source service this is the end to end demo of how we set up the microservices in the nestcs one is a one is a client and one is a listener microservice so i'm starting the order microservice and this is the delivery service i guess and then yes this is the order and the another is the delivery and uh, i can start playing with this thing i will just check the the name and the queue names at the at the client proxy and the server both names should be same because otherwise how would we get the right set of data if the sender is not using the same queue which the receiver is so this is the controller now we can just play with the stuff like we play with the whole setup here we are making the confirm order right so this is uh, get we can just create a test url maybe we'll plug it in with the some endpoint here i'm just creating a test tree url to check if the event is being, being forwarded or not so this is the test rmq and what i'm doing is i'm just selecting an order and here all those things so here you need to inject the client proxy this is the client side setup okay we just created a server now we need to create a client proxy you need to inject this so that we can use it and so here we can use the client proxy and on module in it you need to you need to connect to this client you can use the same uh, listener service you need to inject with the same name order listener service and you are injecting the client for order listener service because you can connect to different different client proxies you can create order listener service uh, payment listener service and then can create a different client proxies for each and everything on module in it on the module initialization you need to connect to the client so here you can implement the own module in it interface and here you can say this dot try cache this dot client dot connect and if this is connected successfully you can start sending the event and how we are sending the event is let's say if uh, the order status if the status coming from the payload is success status dot success is equal to uh, payload okay query parameter dot success query dot success then what we need to do is this dot client dot emit there is an event method and here you will just send a the order name order process success this is the the route this is the the string we have configured on the controller this is actually the event name you can say and i'm sending order id and the order payload these are the two attributes i'm sending once you are confirming the address confirming the payment and uh, making the order successful so saved order and you can return the saved order here this is just to send the data across services so target service doesn't know anything about it they just know okay but this if this event is this then you will get this kind of payload and you need to know how to deal with that payload so order processed success
and we are just doing console log and the target service and this is the URL we are connecting to the order messages queue this is the order controller test we can just hit this test test controller and try to see okay the client .emit, maybe some dummy data uuid and some saved order some empty object right this is just for testing purpose but in the the real case we are sending the whole order payload and the json okay so what we can do is we can just use the swagger url if you don't want it to use the whole stripe flow you can just go and use the order services on this particular port and try to hit the test url I already covered this whole uh, microservice playlist in a separate where I'm talking about Red Ace, RabbitMQ, MQ, Kafka, all set of microservices. And here you can see on this terminal, you can see this order is coming. I mean, this is just like a dummy. We are just doing a testing. This is where I'm just submitting this test URL on the order service. And in the delivery service, we are getting the payload and the, some dummy text which we set on the test endpoint. Now, if you wanted to test it in the real, so this is the test endpoint and test RMQ which is sending order ID and order payload as an empty JSON object. The same thing you can be can be tested. So here we are just sending it again and again. And this is the order, this is the card service. This is the order service and this is the delivery service where we are getting the data back. So end-to-end -end communication is established from the client proxy to the server. So that's it. In the next video, we will try to make this event both